In this video, I'll be explaining what is discrete log problem. But before that, let's just have a look at the one of the exponential equation and let's look at the solution of this exponential equation as well to understand how we are moving to discrete log problem. In an exponential equation, 2x equal to 32, there are different ways to solve it. Let's say we are simply doing a trial and error. So from here, we can see that 2 raised to power x is same as 2 to the power 5. And then we'll say that x equal to 5. This is the solution of this exponential equation. But if I take another equation, 2 to the power x equal to 140, still I can search and I can just see that 2 to the power 7, which is 128 and 2 to the power 8, that is equal to 256. So this means by looking 128 and 256, we know that 140 we require on the right hand side. So x should lie somewhere between 7 and 8. So because this uh, we can see that because fx which is equal to 2 to the power x that is our exponential function which I have considered. This is strictly increasing function as x increases. So as we say that x increases this function also get increased. Or we can simply say that whenever b is greater than 1 x1 and x2 are satisfying this inequality that x1 is strictly greater than x2. So b to the power x1 is also greater than b to the power x2. Now fixing a base, suppose that we have now this type of again a problem we, b is fixed and then we have b to the power x something but now I want to find this with respect to mod n and if we look at my some of the previous videos on the congruences this is congruent to something this one is reduced integer with respect to mod n so for example i simply want to say 31 this is congruent to dash mod with respect to 5 so this i will replace with an integer which is a kind of a remainder when i divide this by 5 so we can see that 30 is divisible by 5 so i will simply keep this as 1 so that is a remainder or i will simply say a is congruent to b mod n whenever n divides a minus b. So this is the discrete log problem that we want to find what is b to the power x with respect to mod n. So in a formal definition discrete log problem we defined as given a prime p and a primitive root g and h which is not congruent to 0 mod p or we can simply say here that the gcd of h and p this is equal to 1 because p is a prime so p does not divide h find x such that g to the power x is congruent to h mod p so we want to find a solution of x so this is something equivalent to the exponential problem so that is why we call it as a discrete log problem so this has something to do with the exponential and the log in the natural way or you can say that this is an analogous problem. Now here I have used the word primitive root. So for this primitive root, I refer to some of my previous video. Link added in description. So the videos on primitive root and indices, you can find in this playlist primitive root and indices. There I have explained this concept of index of an integer. So index of an integer is same as discrete log of the integer. That is the same as x. So here... I'm using the word discrete because we are trying to just understand this with the cryptographic application. So that is why the na name discrete log problem consider. And it is assumed that this is not an easy problem to solve with the current computers, with the current computation algorithms. So that is why it, is, it has huge application in cryptography. But if we are looking from number theory point of view, we can see that this is same as index of a problem or the primitive root or we may say that this is a generator so i'll explain what do we mean by generator or the primitive root with a simple example suppose that in this example i choose a prime which is equal to 5 and i choose a primitive root g as 2 now as g is selected as generator or the primitive root so let's write g this is the generator or the primitive root so we can take all the exponent for 2, 2 to the power 1, 2 square, 2, 3, 2 to the power 4. Let's take this exponent up till 2 to the power phi n and we will see that it will generate all the element which are relatively prime with 5. So 2 raised to power 1 is 2, 2 square that is 4, this is congruent to 4, 2, 3, this is 8 
8 is further congruent to 3 mod 5. We can see that 8 minus 3 is congruent to 5. We need to go back to the definition of the linear uh, congruences here. So I recommend to watch the previous video. Link added in description. 2 to the power 4, this is 16. 16 is congruent to 1 mod 5. Now what it has done? Generator has generated all the elements that are relatively prime with 5. So you can see we have 2, 4, 3, 1. Or I may write this as, suppose I choose H as 1, 2, 3, 4. Now H is not congruent to 0 mod phi. Or we can say the GCD of H with P should be 1. So these are the elements. H is the element such that the GCD of H with 5 because currently P is 5. This is 1. So these are the element whose GCD with 5 is 1. Corresponding to this, I want to select the uh, X. So what would be X? This is basically the discrete log. So we can see from this one, this is the X. As we say, generator is G and I am just interested in finding what is this X. So we just have to look if this is the X corresponding to which H we found. So we first look at that if uh, X is 1, 1 is coming due to H2. So here this H is 2 and this is 1. Or you may select H first and then you can choose X. If H is 1, if this is 1, you can see on the right side we have H. Then correspondingly X is 4. So this is 4. For 3 it is back to 3 and for 4 this is 2. So this is called the index or the discrete log. So for calculating this we must need to have a generator and we have selected a prime. Now the question is so does every prime have a primitive root? Yes every prime has a generator or the primitive root. In fact, if we consider a simple integer n equal to 2, 4, p to the power k or twice of p to the power k where p is odd, only this will have primitive root. In no other circumstances the or the remaining uh, integers will not have the primitive root. If n has a primitive root, that means if n is of this type, then it has phi of phi of n primitive root where phi is the Euler's Tortian function. I'll bring back the same example which I just done earlier. Let me to choose uh, again n is equal to 5. So in this case, I selected my prime as or the integer as 5. How many primitive root will this have? So this will have phi of phi of n. Now phi of n, you can see that we have here phi of 5. So we will use the definition of the phi function. How many integers they are relatively prime with 5? There are 4. Again, we'll apply this definition to 4. How many integers are relatively prime with 4? 1 and 3. So this is 2. This means 5 has 2 primitive root. 5 has 2 primitive root. So the count is 2. There are 2 primitive roots corresponding to 5. One that I have shown you earlier. Let's take g as 2. To act as a primitive root, we can see that if I just take all the power of 2. So, generally, if a is the primitive root, let's say if I just simply take a as primitive root of an integer n, then we'll take a to the power 1, a square up till so on, a to the power phi n. So, we'll take this much number of power. This is congruent to a1, a2 up till so on, a n. These are the int a phi n. So these are the integers that are relatively prime with n. So where ai's are relatively prime with n. In our case n is equal to 5. Let's choose which are the integers which are relatively prime. So a1, a2, a3, a4. Let's say a1 is 1, a2 is 2, a3 is 3 and this is 4. There are 4 integers which are less than 5 and they are relatively prime with 5. Now I'm just taking... Uh, g equal to 2 as I've just done earlier. We can see 2 to the power 1 is 2. 2 square this is 4. 2 cube that is 8. 8 is further congruent to 3 mod 5. And then 2 to the power 4 which is 16. 16 is congruent to 1 with respect to mod 5. So we got all integers back. So that is why we said 5 is uh, 5 has 2 as primitive root and it has generated and we have seen the discrete definition. Let's see one more. If I take generator g is equal to 3. So 3 to the power 1. This is congruent to 3. 3 square which is 9. 9 is congruent to 4 mod 5. Then I will take 3 to the power 3. 
that is 27 27 is congruent to 2 mod 5 and i will take one more 3 to the power 4 because i have to state 2 3 to the power phi n that's the exponent last 3 to the power 4 uh, which will become 81 81 is congruent to 1 mod 5 so now to understand the discrete log so we'll simply look at back to the definition that was g to the power x is congruent to h mod p so we will say discrete log of h is x so that's the exponent if i just look at the first case what will happen here we will have a discrete log of 3 that is equal to exponent which is 1 in the next case we simply say discrete log of 4 is equal to exponent which is appearing here and this is we are calculating with respect to primitive root 3 so we can write that in bottom and then we'll have discrete log of 2 that is equal to 3 from this one and we can say from the last one discrete log of 1 equal to 4. So this way we can calculate the discrete log problem this is exactly same as what we have studied in index so this is what we mean by discrete log problem now in this example we can again see n is equal to 19 and one of the generator for this 19 i've considered g equal to 2 so we see that 2 to the power x is equal to h so this row second row will give me index of h so i'll simply write index of h this is equal to x because in the exponent it is x or I make a say discrete log of h is equal to x. So we see that if I want to know, so we we'll don't start generally from looking at h or if you say that if you want to know what is the index of 15, it's very hard. So you want a 15 here that is on the right hand side and to which exponent it appear with respect to mod 19. That's the problem. So this is how we look write this problem here. And if you want to find the solution, x will come out to be 11. So considering this that this is not an easy problem as the integer goes larger as the p goes larger cons this problem is not easy to solve there are few algorithms but again it is assumed that computationally this is infeasible for large primes hundreds of digits of the large prime that's why it has huge application in the cryptography.